Hey everyone, welcome back to the Engineering Toolbox channel where we solve real world engineering problems with common or maybe not so common tools. So we're back talking about our project management um, Excel document. Uh, so in the last video we talked about how to create this table, some of the fields, um, calculated fields, that type of thing. Um, but what we want to do now is create a visual representation of our project list through um, a Gantt chart. And I'm not going to go into too much of how to use a Gantt chart, what it's for, that type of thing. A quick Google search should be able to um, turn up some good results for you. So go ahead and check that out if you're not familiar with a Gantt chart. And then uh, stop back over and I'll show you how to actually create one based on your project list. So right off the bat, a couple things that I did, um, or I added to our project table was I added a column for today's date, uh, and I did that with the formula, built-in formula that Excel has that returns today's date, and all that is right there, as you can see, is equals today, and then close parentheses. Uh, I also added this percentage date, which will be a date value representation of the percentage. Um, kind of hard to explain, but you'll see how that comes into play when we build the Gantt chart. So how we calculate this is, oh my goodness. So I was playing around before and I converted my table to range. So what we want to do is recreate the link to the table columns or the table values. So you can see that it was linked to a specific range, but now I want to link it to the column value. So, all right. So now it's a little easier to understand in our formula here. So we can see that it takes this uh, percentage date value is calculated by taking the start date plus the due date minus the start date or the difference between the due date and the start date or the length of time that the project has to be completed times the completion percentage and that will give us a value um, oh man that will give us a value oops here we'll close that off I was missing one that will give us a value <laughs> that um, is basically the date representation of how far along the project is. Okay, I think that covers it for the changes I made here. So we'll go ahead and first thing we want to do is create a pivot table and we're going to send this to a new worksheet. Then we want to select the project, the due date, the or percentage date so again that percentage or date representation of the completion percentage and then the start date and actually this order is important and you'll see why in a little bit here um, but so it's returning the count of each value and you can see there's one date for each project or one of each of these dates for each project um, so what we want to do is switch that to a sum or an average and it doesn't matter which one because they'll both return the same value since there's only one date value no matter if you uh, select average or sum here it's still going to return the the date value that was entered into our table so I'll just select sum for these we'll go down each one select sum Some, so I, I'm sure you're all familiar that Excel uses um, a numeric value in the background and then for date values and then we can format those as dates. So we have our date values and then we want to take those and format them as date and we'll use short date. So now you can see that that number turns into our date and actually displays as the date we want to see date okay and then last one start date format date okay so now we can see um, numerically uh, our data represented in this pivot table so for each project we can see the due date the 
uh, percentage date value and then the start date but now we want to turn this into a graphical representation of our data so the first thing we want to do is go up here select pivot chart um, then we want to use a bar chart to give us that horizontal um, bar that Gantt charts usually or pretty much always have um, and then we'll use this clustered bar chart we don't want to use stacked or 100% stacked you could use 3d if that is more appealing to you but that just changes the look it doesn't um, edit or change the data at all I'll just use the regular 2d clustered bar chart so that gives us a graph and that's tied to our pivot table which is tied back to our project list so here we can see each project and then the start date the percentage completion date and the due date for each project and what we want to do is format these so they're overlapping so it looks like one bar so, and we can do that by I always have a hard time finding this okay right click format chart area and then we'll get this uh, sidebar over here that allows us to edit the chart um, so we want to click on any one of the series and then go to the series options tab and then make the series overlap 100%. So if we go back to here, I said the order here matters and why it does is you can see as I change these, it changes the layering order of the data. So it actually goes from bottom to top. So start date is what's on top. That's this value here in the gray and then percentage date shows below that and then due date shows below that um, so now we can I'll well, close that again and then we can format each data series with the correct colors to get this to look how we want um, start date we want to cover everything here so we're gonna give that a solid white fill and that'll cover up the percentage date and due date below it so you can see when I click off it's all covered up the other thing we can do here is just select those and delete them and it kind of cleans things up a little bit you can leave them in if you want um, definitely up to you but I choose to kind of take them out just because it's um, for reference only you know you're not going to be able to drill down to the exact day or anything on this chart it's just a good overview representation so that the uh, vertical lines aren't too important um, next we can format this I know I'm kind of going in an odd order that's usually how my brain works so that was a little cluttered down there and instead of expanding the chart really big to get those to space out we'll just rotate them vertically again by going home home tab when you have the uh, uh, access labels selected down here home tab and then the angle you can select anyone that you want that uh, gives you the look you want um, next thing we want to do is I'm gonna change the color of the percentage date I like it to look green so we'll go solid fill and green so then that'll show us on the bar how far along we are in completing a project so we can see visually that this was the scheduled start date and this is the end date and this is about where we are on that timeline percentage wise it doesn't mean that this is the day it just means that that's um, the percentage completion of this timeline so next we want to go back to our oops, pivot table options here and add today's date and it went haywire on me couldn't tell you why oh of course because it, it's showing the count it's showing the count so we want to get rid of that and make it some just like everything else 
All right, and then how we want to format this is basically transparent. So we want to say no fill, and then that'll hide it. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to um, add a trend line. Oh no, we'll add a trend line to that. And even though it's hidden, that trend line will still show up for us. So we can go to here and add a trend line. You can see that that line shows up real nice, um, doesn't cover up anything. And that is a representation of today. I'm going to reformat that to kind of give it the feel I want. Color here, I'll make it red. I'll make it a solid line, and then I'll make it a little thinner. 0.5, give it a pinstripe kind of feel. All right, so pretty much done. Uh, the last thing that we'll probably want to do um, is just kind of sort the data in a logical order. So the best way I think, oops, undo that. The best way I think to sort this so the graph kind of makes more logical sense is to sort the due date in order so it displays as nearest due on top to furthest due on the bottom. And what we have to do is actually go largest to smallest. So now we can see the timeline of when our projects are due, how far along they are in comparison to today's date. And that's really all a Gantt chart is meant to do. Um, there's definitely a lot more functionality in the Microsoft project, but for Excel, this is pretty good. It's just a quick, easy way to get a representation of your projects. So for example, we can see that this project hasn't been started. It's not complete, nothing. So um, it's definitely way behind schedule. It's overdue. The due date was here, today is here. That project is overdue. This project is behind today, but it's complete. It's solid green. So that project is complete. Um, this project is behind schedule. It hasn't hit its due date, but you can see by the percentage complete that uh, it's behind schedule. And then this uh, project here is uh, actually ahead of schedule. So that's good to see. Somebody's doing a good job. And then uh, these two projects are behind schedule, not overdue, but behind schedule again, because they haven't started and today's date is represented here by that line. Uh, the last thing we can do, depending on your preference, is to send this to its own sheet. So, oops, sorry, again, right click, move chart, and then go to new, new, new sheet here, and then we'll label that as Gantt chart. Hit OK, and then that'll send it to its own sheet here, and I should really follow my own advice and label this as project pivot. So this can get a little funky. Um, some of the limitations of having it on its own sheet, it looks nice, but you can't resize it. Um, there are some things that we can do. Let's see if we copy and paste that. We can move that chart to an object in Gantt chart. And hmm, that didn't work. So yeah, you can't resize. Oh no, we can. So yeah, you can see how now it's an object within this chart because I copied and pasted it out. Uh, I, I don't want to confuse anyone or get too crazy with this, but there's some things you can do there. Maybe I'll expand on that in a later video. I've done this before where I show multiple charts in a, in a sheet like this or that type of thing. But anyways, yeah, if we move the chart to its own sheet, um, it looks nice. It makes its, its own sheet, so it'll print. Night, oops. <clears throat> if we go to print, you can see it. It uh, fits nicely right on the sheet of paper, that type of thing. But if you get a lot of projects on here, since you can't resize anything, um, it can get cluttered. The other thing is if we only have, well, let's go ahead and add a slicer. This is a nice feature. 
I know I'm going off on tangents here. Again, that's just how my mind works. But a slicer is a nice feature, so we can add that, and that allows you to basically filter your, your uh, data or stratify your data or however you want to look at it. Slice it, as it's called. So if I select capital purchase here, it's only showing data here um, or projects here that are of the capital purchase project type. So if we go back to our project list, you can see that it's only showing these two projects because they're of the project type capital purchase. So that's definitely a great feature. So we filtered our pivot table, yeah, our pivot table here. So our pivot chart will also be filtered. And you can see it kind of looks a little goofy when there's only two data points in there. But this is a great way to filter things down if um, this gets cluttered with too many projects, that type of thing. So some different options. You, of course, you can always leave it right in here, and that'll be fine. That's useless. <laughs> um, we got to get rid of that. Grand totals turn off. So yeah. Those are some different features and some of the ways we can go about this, but really I hope that gives a good every, good idea to everyone about how to create a Gantt chart. Um, some companies like this sort of thing more than others. Some bosses like this sort of thing more than others. Um, I do it just for my own personal projects just so I can keep tabs on everything. Um, it's nice for that. And if anybody ever wants to know where things are at, I can say, hey, here's a Gantt chart and give them an idea. Um, so yeah, it's great uh, because we can do it in Excel. We don't need Microsoft Project or some other kind of um, project management software to create this thing. It's definitely a lot more limited than Microsoft Project, but for, um, for uh, it being all done with Excel, I think it definitely gives us a great graphical representation of, of project timelines. So I hope that helps everyone. I hope that everyone found this useful. Don't be afraid to leave comments, questions, anything, uh, feedback for me in the comments section below. Uh, thanks, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.